What's up everybody? My name is Scott Paddock and today we're going to talk about how to use overtones functionally in solos. So you have been practicing your overtones really hard and it's really been developing your sound. You're getting a bigger, fatter sound through the use and practice of overtones. And now you probably want to know how you can functionally use, functionally use them in other parts of your playing, uh, especially improv solos. So today I'm going to give you some pointers on how to functionally make these notes work as more than just the exercise to get a bigger, fatter sound, how to make them work in your improv to make your improv sound way cooler. Now, before we dive into the video, there is a disclaimer. This is not a how to do overtones video. This is how to use overtones functionally. So you need to already know how to use overtones for this video to help you. If you don't know how to use overtones already, uh, I did do a video on that. Uh, I suggest you check that out. And then after working on that a little bit, come back to this video. But this video is not gonna cover how to do an overtone. It's gonna show you how to use them in an improv solo. Okay, so the scale that we are gonna to use today to work on these overtones, these functional overtones, is the C blues scale. And we're gonna use the C blues scale because every note in the C blues scale has a pretty easy to get out overtone, except for E flat. There is not an overtone for your E flat. So we're gonna do your C blues scale uh, in the second octave. So starting on your middle C, it will sound like this. So you have a C overtone. You have an F overtone. You have an F sharp overtone. You have a G overtone. You have a B flat overtone. And a high C overtone. So this is a great scale to start using overtones on because there are so many in it, in it that are pretty easy to get out. We are going to start with a G. So we're going to play a regular G and then play an overtone G. And we're going to play that back and forth. So the easiest way to use overtones in a solo is to go back and forth between one note. I call it the one note groove. So we're gonna play a G and then an overtone G and we're gonna use the rhythm to make it sound cooler. So it's gonna sound like this. Now, if every one of your overtone Gs doesn't come out perfect, that's okay, because what we're trying to do is add a little bit of grit and a different sound to the G. Uh, so if you don't get everyone crystal clear, that is totally fine. But that is your first step. Now, obviously that's not super cool, but that is a step in the right, direct, in the right direction. The next thing we're gonna do is use our tongue on this. So we're gonna re-articulate either the regular G or the overtone G. So it's gonna give us three variables to work with. We're gonna have our regular G, our overtone G, and then our tongue. So we're gonna to tongue the regular G or the over overtone G a couple times when we go back and forth. It'll sound like this. Do you hear how the rhythm starts to sound cooler when we do that? So we're playing, we have three different ways to manipulate this note. So we're doing a one note groove and we're doing it, we're doing three things to make it sound different. Obviously playing the original note, the overtone note, and then the tongue. So what we wanna do is try to get it going a little bit faster and be a little bit more aggressive with the way we tongue. The way I started doing this is I would hear guitar players and guitar players have several of the same note on their neck. So they would play a solo and they would play uh, one note two or three different ways that would give them uh, the same note but a different sound. So that's a way of doing it on the saxophone. It's kind of like a guitar riff where you're just like jamming out on that one note. So uh, let's do the one note groove one more time. This time I'm gonna get a little bit funkier with it. Um, I'm going to articulate a little bit stronger and I'm gonna really dig into this groove. So that way you can definitely hear what's going on with it and it sounds pretty cool. I'm gonna do it like in a blue scale solo. I'm just gonna do a short little solo and I'm gonna throw this into it so you can hear what I'm talking about. You hear that little groove in there? It puts a little grit on it. It's just not so nice and pretty of a blue scale. You got a little bit of grit in there by using those overtones. Listen again. It's 
Sounds cool, right? Now, you can also, of course, do that on any of the other overtone notes in the scale. So if we do it on a C, then make it sound cooler. Do you got that pop in there? I wasn't trying to do it, but it sounded cool. So when you're doing these overtones, if you get like an extra note, an extra thing, an extra something on it, that's totally cool because of what you're trying to do with the, this one note groove. So I'm gonna play, again, a C blues scale uh, improv lick, and I'm gonna put the overtones on the C this time. So that is your one note groove for functional overtones in your improv solos. Okay, so the next step is we are just gonna add a note into our one note groove. So we're gonna do a one note groove and just add another note in our blues scale into it. So we'll do it on the G. So did you hear the B flat and the F I put in there? So I'm not doing an overtone on the B flat or the F I'm doing below. I'm just adding those in so that I have a little bit more stuff to work with on this groove. So we took the one note groove and we're turning it into like a combination one note groove. Sounds cool, right? In the right, or in the right circumstance when you're improvising, it'll sound super cool. Again, you get these combinations of notes that sound really, really cool. Okay, so the next step is doing a chromatic one note groove. So we're gonna start on F and go F sharp and then G. So of course I'm doing your F to your F overtone, which is used with a low B flat. Then I'm gonna go to F sharp, which is uh, the overtone is fingered with the B. And then G, which is fingered with the C. So I'm going to do F, F sharp, G, one note grooves, but I'm going to go up chromatically. So you get this building thing that also sounds really cool. So there's all different kinds of combinations you can do that'll make this thing sound really, really good. Now, one big mistake uh, my students make when they first start using these uh, 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 overtone combinations is they don't re-articulate the, the original note, like the original note or the overtone note. So they just do this. And that doesn't sound cool. That just almost sounds like a weird ambulance or something. So you have to re-articulate a note and get a really cool rhythm for it to sound good. You hear the difference between that and that doesn't have a cool rhythm to it. Now, if you notice, I'm also bringing out important notes. I'm bringing out goal notes, and all I'm doing is re-articulating uh, or over-articulating one of the notes. And it doesn't matter which one it is. You just want some stuff to stand out. The next thing is the double overtone. So we are gonna play a G overtone. Just like we've been working on. And we're gonna play a C overtone, which the high C, uh, high C overtone, which has the same fingering. So you put them together. So that's the way to start working on it. Obviously that doesn't sound cool, but you need to get your tongue used to jumping back and forth. And then you use the same concept as the one note groove, except this time you're using two overtones and you're gonna throw those extra notes into it. So it's gonna sound like this. So 
So the other note I'm using that is not an overtone is the B flat. I'm just using that as a go between note just so that it sounds cooler. So I can also do that with the F below the G. So again, I'm gonna do it in slow motion again just so you can hear what's going on. And it doesn't sound quite as good when you do it slow, but when you speed it up, it sounds really cool. So again, here is, it, here is this concept with the uh, double overtone uh, going a little bit slower. Sounds pretty cool, all different kinds of textures. Okay, so here is the double overtone up to tempo. It's gonna have the G with the G overtone, the C with the C overtone, and I'm also gonna throw some B flats and Fs in there so it sounds cool. All kinds of sounds in there, right? Now, I'm gonna do a C blues scale solo and I will throw a lick in there, the double overtone lick. Sounds cool, right? Now, the next step would be throwing in other overtones, but I would suggest starting with the G and C to get really comfortable with it. Then you can throw an overtone in on the F or on the B flat, uh, whatever notes you're comfortable with, uh, just to add more texture to it. But start off with the G and C. But this is what it sounds like when you throw the whole thing together. You have those overtones I'm throwing in there? All kinds of overtones. So what you're doing is you're really using a rhythmic approach to your improv because you have a lot of the same notes that are repeated. So you're not doing like a gigantic chordal improv that has a whole bunch of complex harmony. You're kind of jamming out uh, on a groove and you're using these overtones to give you some different sounds. So it's all a progression. So I would suggest starting off with just your one note groove. Then do your one note groove and add in the extra note. Then do your two uh, overtone groove. So we're gonna, this time we're gonna do it on the G and a C. Then add another overtone in there. So this time I'm gonna do the one on the F. So we're gonna have a G overtone, a C overtone, and a F overtone. And that is how to use overtones functionally in improv solos. Thanks for taking the time to check out this video. If you now understand how to use overtones in your improv solos, I'd really appreciate it if you'd subscribe to my channel, give me a thumbs up, and share it with your friends. Thanks a lot.